So what is your analysis of what exactly happened here? As you stated, you know, the intelligence communities have gotten together. They, they issued warnings originally in May that this type, they saw early signs of this type of activity, and now they've confirmed it, and they have made attribution. As you said, they're known as Cozy Bear. Um, they're known in cyber circles as APT29 uh, as well. We've seen this group before, uh, so this isn't the first time. We actually saw them. This is the same group with the DNC, with the Pentagon, uh, with some other government type of hacks in the past. And I think what's really interesting is trying to get at the heart of, you know, what are they after? Clearly, the U.S. and our allies have spent in the billions of dollars already towards vaccine research. So there's clearly a lot at stake uh, financially, economically, and of course, about saving lives. So that was my next question. You know, how vulnerable is this information given that it's something everybody wants and how can it be protected? Yeah, I think there's there's two aspects of what people could be after. And the first one is actually around the intellectual property. So that's the actual research itself about the approaches and techniques uh, that could be used for these vaccines. But the other type of data that is equally important, and again, we don't know if this specifically has been hacked or targeted yet, is the underlying patient data. The data that would actually come from things like the um, antivirus test sets, the COVID swab test, even some genetic uh, testing that's been going on. And that would actually, you know, of course, um, say who has and who doesn't have, you know, COVID. The reason that set could be really, really valuable is AI simulations can be run if they, if someone has access to that patient level data. And those AI simulations could speed up somebody, some other country's ability maybe to get the vaccine sooner. But the downside risk is if, if citizens lose trust that that patient level data isn't protected, would that decentivize them to go and get tested, right? Because now that data could be at risk. So I think, you know, that those are the two streams people could be after, the research data itself or the underlying patient data to run these AI simulations on. Now, this group, Cozy Bear, that is supposedly behind this is, is normally a pretty low profile group. They're normally sort of gathering intelligence, not doing something this high profile, if you will. You've got the Kremlin denying these accusations, saying Russia has nothing to do with the attempts, according to a spokesperson. Do you believe that? You know, we've, we've talked many times, attribution is always really quite difficult. I think as uh, there's not all of the facts have, haven't been released yet, um, but I guess the techniques that were used in the specific malware uh, was very uh, similar to the malware techniques and advanced malware techniques that have been used by Cozy Bear in the past. But um, likely the intelligence community probably has other information uh, maybe even beyond cyber information uh, to verify those facts. We just, we don't have all of that information. It's, it's been a bit scarce so far.